What's up, old slow one? Uh, this is a TVZ where you're gonna rush basically straight to three three marines with battle cruisers and ravens. Uh, I would be really worried. I mean, I, I would be really cautious about doing marine-based builds unless you're gonna patrol spread uh, your marines because managing marines is very micro-intensive in TVZ since banelings and lings on creep with both sides a moving. The ling baneling will trade ridiculously efficiently with. With Ling, spreading of Marines is the only thing that makes them viable in TVZ. So I would just recommend that you don't do Marine builds. I, I don't think you you're going to be able to. I mean, it's, it's until you've done the the unit the 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 test map where you uh, split l Marines against Ling Baneling. Until you can like do that and be relatively successful with it, it's probably just not worth doing primarily Marine-based builds. I would much rather see you make armies that are centered around uh, marines mixed with hellions and thors, or hellions and thors and tanks, or something like that. Um, and uh, if, especially if you want to go for uh, eventually having a bunch of banshee raven, um, banshee raven BC, something that synergizes really well with that is to open up with the the two port banshee build, which is crazy strong, useful against zerg. Uh, two port banshee. Um, uh, you show up with two banshees, and then uh, the zerg is like, "I can deal with two two banshees super easily. I'll get a couple spores, use a couple queens, it's easy." And then you show up with two more, and now you have four, and you start you, you repair the the one or whatever. And then you show up with six, and all of a sudden six banshees are two seven, and just and they can just avoid spores and kill hatcheries, or walk around to this side avoiding spores and kill drones or whatever. And uh, they just bring these treads, and then the transition off of two port banshee is to expand and get start getting ravens and a bunch of marines and whatever. Um, another thing I'd recommend for you: this wallen is kind of kind of terrible. Also, pure marine defensively just isn't very good. Uh, you need kind of siege tanks or bunkers, one or the other, to to do things defensively. So if you're gonna primarily go for marines and air units, you need more than one bunker. I would I would recommend three or four. Um, another thing I I would like to see is this third command center should start at like 11 minutes uh, another thing is you, you you should start benchmarking yourself go into the unit map to I mean go into the uh, custom game against a very easy AI and just see if you can hit 200 unit space at four minutes and 20 seconds because with nobody breathing down your neck with no need to walk around the map with no need to make a wall in or bunkers with no need to do anything complicated uh, it should be really easy to spend about nine thousand dollars by fourteen minutes. And if we look at uh, this game, where you have all these things to think about, you're 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 wanting to tech up to BCs and Ravens, and you're wanting to use your Banshees, you're wanting to push out with your Marines, you're wanting to get all sorts of these upgrades. You try to get plus one, plus one stim and combat shields all at the same time. I definitely also recommend against doing that sort of stuff. Try to get upgrades one at a time in a nice even fashion so that you're spending most of your money on armory not most of your money on on upgrades but anyway uh what you managed to end up with around 14 minutes was 8 9 10 11 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 uh, so you ended up with a five thousand dollar army so i said you should be shooting for nine and you ended up with five uh, and if we add the stuff in your bank that's an additional four and a half so you have nine thousand dollars that you pulled out of the ground but you just didn't turn it into army so you can see that because you did a great job by ten minutes of having already almost fifty workers like forty eight workers in ten minutes this is amazing this is really good uh... by the time you get to fourteen minutes you have pulled enough money out of the ground and not needed to spend it on supply depots such that you have enough money to theoretically be at two hundred units space and i think you would find that you are a, a lot more powerful with 200 unit space uh, of something like Thor Hellion tank um, or even just Marine Marauder Medivac Thor uh, tank like all those things mixed together or even just pure freaking Raven with some Marines whatever then you are with only a hundred and a hundred supply like you have exactly a hundred supply at 14 minutes and I think that's that's a big thing that you, you don't really want to be playing ladder games against other people if you if you're unable to to have a reasonable army size at a reasonable time because you what you're doing is reinforcing this kind of expectation of how the game's gonna go if you have very little money and your opponent has very little money and you do kind of unrealistic things and he does kind of unrealistic things you start to 
work on playing in this unrealistic world where you're trying to do better at, at winning unrealistic games. And if instead you just make sure to always have and spend nine thousand bucks by fourteen minutes, then you're gonna get you're gonna get promoted into a league where other people also have and spend nine thousand bucks by fourteen minutes, and then all of a sudden the games you guys are playing in in the same playground. You guys both have the same income. You both ha and you just pick different units, and how you use them becomes important, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, one big recommendation I'd have is is just in in future games, fast forward to 14 minutes, count up your army size. In this case, it's 3k plus all those upgrades equals 5k. Um, just compare it to 9k. Did you hit 9k? No. Okay. Uh, so even you know this is how this game went. This is what worked well. This is what didn't work well. Those things are all still kind of worth looking at. But more importantly, did you get a bunch of money and did you spend all that money? Because you have so much money in the bank right here. That, I mean, I'm sure it was obvious to you even when you were playing this game that this was not the optimal way to do what you were trying to do. So while, yes, you did win the game by making some, some Ravens, getting PDDs and battle cruisers with auto turrets underneath them and knocking down all of his expansions, and that is cool, you could have done the exact same thing a way quicker if you'd gotten your third and fourth geyser a lot quicker, um, if you'd uh, taken your third at 12 minutes instead of never, and if you'd made five or six starports instead of just two. Um, so that's that, man. Uh, the, the reason that I'm reticent to suggest people who aren't spreading their wings use, use mass marine builds is like... Oop, da -da -da -da. That when you move marines, if you attack move marines, they form these clumps automatically. It's just how they how they work. So uh, they just get ripped to shreds by banelings. So um, throughout the game, this happened a lot. And look, this is this is you understanding that splitting is important, and this is your kind of attempt to take a small group of marines and split them up along the high ground. But the the time it took you to do that, to move from here to here and split these dudes, was time that you should have been spending on making more buildings, getting your third up. I mean, there's more important things for you to be doing than than trying to split your marines. Um, you need to you need to be able to macro perfectly and have a little bit of time left over in which you can split marines to make marine builds really m make any sense for for you. Um, also, this split. I mean, a sp th an ideal split has less than two guys in each group, so this is four, this is five, this is three. So uh, even even when you did take the time to split out, you didn't split well enough to make Marines a viable unit against Banelings. Um, and this, he just has one burrowed Ling and it delays your, your third command center forever. Also you made a command center up here that you just never even considered using. Also you basically cut workers at 56 forever, which I'm okay with, That's basic, that's called two basing. But the problem is if you cut workers at 56, you need to have two bases to mine from. And you, you didn't get your third before your before your main ran dry, so you, you weren't really two basing. You were kind of like one basing with 56 useless workers. Um, this is uh, neat that your opponent made this 200 unit space death ball and you were still able to just walk over and knock down the command centers. And I like that. And it might be fun to do this again and again. And play a lot with ravens and bcs and it's cool I, I agree one thing to keep in mind is that bcs have a natural four armor so when you get that or natural three armor so when you get that plus one armor now they have four and four is nice but six is better because infested terrans do uh eight damage so the like the difference between three armor and four armor is is uh I don't, not as significant as the difference between four and five, and then the difference between five and six is even e is even greater. Like as a percentage of damage reduced, uh, going from five armor to six armor is a really big deal against these eight damage. Uh, corruptors, dollar for dollar, corruptors are the only unit that is just crazy good against battle cruisers. But the problem is that they do their damage slowly. So battle cruisers can just walk away and put marines underneath them and be like, haha, I'm immune to you stupid corruptors. Um, mass upgraded marine works really well against lings if they don't have any, any area of effect nonsense with them. Pulling SCVs to repair is cool, though you should have probably thought of that a lot earlier. Uh, one of the best things about ravens is that if you have an army here and this this spot feels safe to you, you can take the ravens from this spot, 
hold down shift and drop a bunch of turrets near his mineral line. I mean, obviously he's not mining, so it's no longer relevant, but near his greater spire, near something, and then shift right click them back to your army, and those units are safe. They, they walk over, they do damage, they come back, and there's never a period of time where you're likely to, to lose them. So that's a great thing about Ravens. They really like them. It doesn't take very much APM to use Ravens extremely well. Um, and that's great. So I liked a lot of things about what you did. I loved your first 10 minutes, and I kind of hated everything after the first 10 minutes as far as macro is concerned. You got a lot of money. You kept your money pretty low, even though you ended up with a lot of gas that you couldn't really spend until you started getting those upgrades and battle cruisers and stuff. You did well for the first 10 minutes and then kind of screwed it up from there. So I would really like to, you to send me a replay where you get um, $9,000 spent by by 14 or 15 minutes. Uh, give that a shot. See ya.